Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We're going to create a scrapbook layout with the Smarty Pants collection and we're focusing on using stickers, small stickers from those coordinating sticker sheets. I have two photos of my youngest son Clayton on his first day of eighth grade that I'm going to be documenting. Smarty Pants has got this great school theme, perfect for photos like this. So I did narrow it down to these particular patterns that I want to incorporate onto the layout. This piece was already cut, so I'm just kind of eyeballing it to see if I can get a sense for where the layout is going before I cut those down. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these two off and then cut, trim them down. The cork pattern paper ended up being around 10 and a half by 10, and the uh, pattern paper behind my photos is roughly eight and a half by six. The photos themselves measure three and three quarters by five and a quarter, and that includes the white border. So I have this composition kind of pattern paper. It's like a composition notebook, and I love it. That is a scrap, so it doesn't quite reach all the way across the 12 inches of the layout. I do know I want to use this sticker from the coordinating sticker sheet. It says ready to learn. It's going to make for a super quick title. I'm also not 100% sure about all the different pattern papers working together, so I'm gonna bring in some white daisy and word paper and white daisy. Yeah, I think I like that better. Sometimes it's just too much and you need a little white space to give your eye a break. I am going to swap these out. I want a piece of pattern paper that reaches all the way across, so I have this one with all these fun little science icons on there, and then a piece of sapphire blue cardstock to mat my photos, and I think that's going to help them pop a lot more off the layout. This is the Buildable Tags Thin Cut set, and I have this traditional tag shape, and I'm going to cut a tag from this graph paper that coordinates with this collection, and we're going to use that to anchor the embellishments at the top right hand, you know, area above the photos. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I love to use shapes like this, a tag, a circle, a large star, anything, um, to kind of anchor and ground smaller embellishments. I do have a few stickers left over from the coordinating sticker sheet, and then I found these in my stash. They are so old, they've been around forever. The little Jolie's ephemera pencils and notebooks. I'm going to create an embellishment cluster, kind of focusing on an L framing in my photos. So we have this stack of books, and then I'm gonna put the lunch bag right on top. And then we have word stickers. There's a little like sign that says school crossing. And I thought, you know, where else am I going to use that other than a school layout? So perfect. And then this little word sticker says study the act of eating, texting, watching TV with an open textbook nearby. So it's kind of funny but there's also this little alarm clock. So all little tiny stickers from the sticker sheet. This came from a full 12 by 12 sheet of lined note paper that comes in rainbow colors. So I used this stitched rectangle die to cut this out and it made it look like a little piece of paper and it's going to make the perfect spot behind these little embellishments to help them stand out. So basically what I like to do with your small stickers is first of all, remove the adhesive. I use my anti-static powder tool to pat the back and remove the tackiness so I can move them around like die cuts. It just makes it a lot easier. You guys check this out. It's even lined on the inside. How cute is that? I'm going to use the blue one and I will bring in some 3D foam tape to support the other items since we have a dimensional element in the mix. Small stickers can be kind of a challenge to use on their own. They get lost, they feel just kind of random, but when you group them together, I've grounded them on the large tag and then everything is connected to the tag. So all of these smaller elements work together to create one embellishment cluster, if that makes sense. I'm overlapping, tucking, layering, so I like to put things behind the photos. Some of them are over the photos, some of them are popped up with tape to give them different heights. And you can see how that's all coming together, but you have to think of it as one embellishment, really. It's all working together as one. I am bringing in that composition notebook. I did find another sheet and it goes all the way across, so I'm like, yep, gonna use that. Having that darker color down towards the bottom just kind of adds some visual weight to it. And right now I'm popping up my little lunch bag with some 3D foam tape, and that'll look really cute sitting on top of this stack of books there. You'll notice that my embellishment clusters are at a diagonal across from each other, and that just naturally adds balance and draws your eye across the layout. And it's framing in the photo. Your eye wants to find center, and the photos are in the center, so it's naturally gonna make that the focal point. 
Of course, these are all suggestions. There are no hard and fast rules when it comes to creating art, right? It's not like I have this checklist of things that I need to do when I'm creating. Oftentimes when I am creating, it's just naturally coming together from years of experience, but it is helpful to kind of know why something is working or not working. And that way, if you're stuck, you might have some tools in your toolbox on how to fix that or maybe tweak it a little so you do like the finished result. I'm kind of geeking out over how cute these little pencils are, and I'm so glad I found them in my stash because it feels amazing to use them up. You could probably recreate those with just a little bit of like nectarine paper, some silver foil, and a little pink on the end for the eraser. I did cut a little hole reinforcer from Sapphire Paper just to finish off the top of the tag there. And I'm actually going to leave that without any ribbon or anything. That's done enough for me. And then, of course, we have to add our perfectly imperfect patterns, a little controlled splatter. So we're going to bring in the Sapphire ink and ink up this little uh, splatter stamp here. And I'm going to lift this up because I like to kind of put it underneath the embellishments. And I never think about it ahead of time, but that's okay. So a little bit up there. I'm gonna re-ink this and then add some over here. So, you know, I'm adding some to each embellishment cluster and then I do want that in a third location. So kind of following that, you know, theory of the visual triangle, I'm gonna go down beneath the photos at the right-hand side of the title and that'll finish that off nicely. There's a smaller little splatter stamp uh, to get in these tinier spots. So we'll just ink up a few of those and put them right over here. I think that's good on the small one. Let me switch them out for the larger one and then we'll use this one for under the photos here. My boys are growing up so fast. It makes me sad to think there's not gonna be too many more first days of school. My oldest just graduated in May from high school and this one here is going to be a junior. So I got two more, two more years. That's kind of sad and exciting all at the same time. You can see I printed out my journaling on White Daisy cardstock, and then I just cut that with my little guillotine trimmer. I don't have a whole lot to say on this page because there's going to be, you know, more pages where I can talk about the school and things going on. But this is basically just Clayton looking handsome on his first day of eighth grade, and then I put the school and the day and year the photos were taken. I highly recommended hearing these with liquid glue and you can see I have some text on the back. That's because I printed it out the first time without spacing it. I highly recommend 1.5 or double spacing it and that way it just works out perfectly when you cut it. Let me give you a closer look at all of those stickers working together to create a really fun embellishment cluster in the top and lower corner here. Stickers are awesome. I always love getting the coordinating sticker sheets because they just make for a super fast layout. If you found this video helpful, I would love it if you gave it a big thumbs up. If you're looking for more back to school inspiration, check out this playlist right here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. You can find everything I used in the description box below, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.